You're live. Howdy, howdy, folks. Uh, we're back today uh, due to the uh, recent weather last evening after we did the uh, part five of Sure Mercies of David. We had a storm blow through, and, and during that storm, just like 30 miles south, we had a tornado touchdown. We were in the tornado warnings ourselves. And so being uh, with the rain Saturday and with the uh, uh, rain last night, put me out of work today, uh, which is fine. Um, uh, we can focus more now on uh, do part six of the sure mercies of David. And we're going to start getting into the meat and potatoes, like I said yesterday. Um, I'm going to say something right here that uh, I don't know if you've ever heard. But I'm going to have to say it for how I see the scripture. Paul, let's go ahead and turn to Romans 1.16. Paul writes to these Romans, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel of Christ, is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. <clears throat> Folks, during this time frame, during the dispensation of the gospel, Paul was going to the Jew first. And also to the Greek, because they were also found in synagogues. And in Acts 13, I'm not worried again. I'm going to repeat this again. I'm going to say this again. I'm not worried about what Paul knew up here in the future in the prison epistles. I'm not worried about that. I'm only dealing with Acts 13 because everyone says that, but now Ephesians 2.13 is back here to Acts 9. I'm only dealing with what Paul knew or what he could say to these Jews first and also to the Greek. In the hope of Israel. That's all I'm talking about back here. I'm not combining these two dispensations right here. I'm working in this dispensation to see what Paul was saying to the people in the synagogues in Acts 13. That's what I'm doing. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> and along with the winds and everything else, uh, have a few allergies. So you, <clears throat> you hear that? It just... It's just stuff that's going on in the air, and we can't do anything about that because we have summer that is trying to keep its hold on uh, the patterns of weather, and you have the fall that says, your time has been rendered. It's my time now. And in doing so, we get all this pollen and all the leaves and everything blowing, so my voice is scratchy, and I may have to take more drinks today, as I did yesterday, but that's okay. We can whip my whistle with H2O. Anyway, folks. I want to continue on right here. Uh, it was on the right side of the board here last night. And to get this out of the way, uh, a part of the world and where the Baptists make their big mistake. Not only the Baptists, the Catholics do too. It's in the catechism. Let's go ahead and turn to Luke 24. And we can learn something from Luke 24. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you. In Luke 18 and throughout the course of his ministry, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and rise again the third day rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, beginning at Jerusalem, all nations for the remission of sins, which you find Peter doing in Acts 2.38, now let's look at the great commission that the Baptists say that they're in, let's turn to Mark 1615, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's go back one book. And the words are in red, so to sell Bibles, they make them red, the words of Christ. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let's go to Matthew 28. Go left one more book. 
the Baptists and the Catholics great commission. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Let's go again back to Acts 2 5 and see what those nations are. <clears throat> this is on the day of Pentecost. We got to get this stuff out of the way because this, folks, is the same world that Paul spoke of in 2 Corinthians 5 19. That world. And in the same, the world has heard your faith in Romans 1 8. It's the same nations, same world. Acts 2 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, because God's been dealing with Jews for 1,500 years, so there would be Jews dwelling there and scattered in all the nations. But anyway, we're just pertaining to Acts 2 5 right now to find out who these nations are. That they should, that the 12 should go out into the nations, baptizing them for remission of sins. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, folks, you come over here to verse 9, 10, and 11. You find out what the world is and those nations <clears throat> that that great commission for these 12 apostles is supposed to go to. And you'll find in Acts eleven nineteen, while these 12 are doing their thing, they're going to nothing but Jews only. And that's just a tidbit of extra. It's free. I don't charge extra for that. It was just now and I want to get these nations and the world to see who Paul is speaking of and who Peter, the same people, Peter and Paul went to the same Jews. You had the kingdom, the little flock over there became part of the little flock. And then you had Jews that were scattered abroad. That, as you can see in verses 9, 10, 11, they came to Jerusalem under every nation under heaven. Now, let's look at this, folks. Under heaven, we got this big old round globe out here. And these are the only nations that are under heaven. The Scythians came from eastern Ukraine, but they're not listed here, folks. That's not a nation according to God. Why? There's no Jews there. According to God, if there's no Jews there, it's not a nation under heaven. He doesn't care. He didn't care back then. He was dealing with Jews only, as Peter said in Acts eleven nineteen. That's who they went to, Jews only. And then if you aligned yourself with Israel, you blessed Israel. Beth, can you? I got it. If you blessed Israel, according to... Covenant, you are a God fearing Greek according to your Bible. And you were in synagogues. You got to hear, starting in Acts uh, 13, you got to hear Paul preach. Now, folks, when Peter went to Cornelius in Acts 10, you can go back and look in, in Acts 3, it was for the remission of sins. They got that at Christ's second coming. But there's a shift and change. There's a shift in the plates. Because when Paul goes into Acts 13, he's not talking about remission of sins. Paul in Acts 13, 38 says, the forgiveness of sins. Now, Peter didn't preach the forgiveness of sins. There was a shift. The gospel of Christ is now on the scene, if you will. <clears throat> so we got that out of the way. We got that out of the way. I'm going to say something here. Uh, when you look at the book of Romans, <clears throat> as everybody does, and we're going to go ahead and turn to Romans 1.8. This is how everybody sees the book of Romans. One eight. 
First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith in Christ is spoken of throughout the whole world. That's how people see Romans 1.8. And when you look at Romans from that lens, you don't understand the preaching of Jesus Christ. It doesn't say. Now I'm going to read it for what it does say. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken out throughout the whole world. You can go back to the day of Pentecost. Those strangers of Rome or the devout ones are there for those feast days. You had to be faithful to be devout. Devout men. Put the two together and you come up with the solution. Romans is exactly what Paul is saying that how that is in Roman or uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. When he gets down to verse 3, he says, How that Christ died for our sins. In the book of Romans, you're going to find a lot of things right here. You're going to find the word propitiation. You're going to find the word redemption. You're going to find the word atonement. Let's go ahead and go to 1 Corinthians 15. Now, folks, what we have to do here <clears throat> is we are very fortunate today, and we take it for granted. We have this, all of it. Of course, Paul was filled full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, he was. He didn't need this. We do today, and we have all the word. Paul was full of the Holy Ghost. He didn't need this because the Spirit told him what to say. Okay? And when he stands up there in Acts 13, do you not think that he knew exactly what he was going to be have to say in Galatians because it's the same doctrine, the same in Corinthians because it's the same doctrine, the same in Thessalonians because it's the same doctrine, and the same in Romans, which we're going to focus on here today because it is the same doctrine to these folks. If you're going to sit there and say you believe in a two sinning, but that's as far as you want to go, and then you don't want to take that into the doctrine into those people, you're missing the boat, folks. Paul went to two different types of Gentiles. He went to this one right here, the Greek, and then we're not going to get it over to that one. That's not the focus of this uh, study. It's only on these, the Greeks in Romans 1.16. And the dispensation of the gospel. Paul points these people. Let's go ahead and read 1 Corinthians. That way, it's verbatim out of the word of God. 1 Corinthians 15. 3. For I, Paul, delivered unto you, the Corinthians, and also the Roman, which he didn't Romans. He hadn't written a letter yet. He had not been there. But the Galatians and the Thessalonians, if you look on your map, you can sit there and see from Rome all the way around down to northern Africa was the world. You have Europe. You have Turkey. You have the Middle East. And you have the northern portion of uh, Africa right there. The nations, the world. We're dealing with those people in this study. <clears throat> I delivered unto you first all that which I received. If Paul had not put these two words in here, which the Spirit told Paul to write those two words in there, this would be easier. <clears throat> Then what people say, let's read it without that. For I delivered unto you first of all which I also received. Christ died for our sins. And verse 4, he was buried and he rose again the third day. But that's not what it says. As we stated in the last video, the Catholics teach at 977 of the Catechism. And other places in there, too. But does it save them? Just believing <clears throat> that, does that save you? 
Paul says, let's go over and look at it, Romans 16, 25, before we continue into how that. If you want to know what the how that is, folks, according to scriptures, if you want to know that, you start in Romans 1, and you take that thing all the way up through Romans 11. You're going to see the greatest evangelistic tool in your life about the gospel of Christ. Because Paul in there uses all the prophets. He uses the Psalms. He points to Leviticus. He points to the law of Moses. Okay. He's in the law of Moses. He's in the Psalms. And he's in the prophets. Why? Because who was his audience? Jews. If Paul had went speaking anything else outside those scriptures, which they did call him that, they would call him a heretic like they call me. Okay? We're only focusing on the Jew because I'm going to ask you a question. <clears throat> and I don't like dealing with hypotheticals because the world in and of itself is vexing enough, let alone adding hypotheticals to the situation. But for this purpose of this study, I'm going to ask you, if <clears throat> a Jew came to you, he's thinking about things. He sees things all throughout this world on Facebook and everything. <clears throat> And he comes up to you and he says, Joe, tell me about this. I've heard something about Romans 16, 25. And this first Corinthians thing, you talk about three and four. And you got to remember, folks, they don't believe Christ is the Messiah. What scriptures do they have and they still use? Genesis through Malachi, because they don't believe the rest of it. Are you going to be able to, as Paul laid out in the early books, 1 through 11, as he laid out in those chapters, are you going to be able to take that Jew and do exactly what he says will save that man? Because let's read 1625. <clears throat> Remember in the beginning of this letter? It was to establish you by the gospel of Christ. And if you go through, if you go through and you believe all that, that Paul had written down, using the Old Testament scriptures, the ones that he references, you'll be saved. It doesn't matter if you're Gentile or Jew. You take that Jew, and if he believes the Old Testament scriptures, and you take it, now, no, I don't want you using anything up here, because he's not going to believe that. But you take Romans, just 1 through 11, with that man. About what everything Paul teaches, the man's got to have, a, he's going to be sweating bullets if he doesn't believe it. Romans 16, 25, now to him that is of power to establish, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now, folks, it says, but now, what are you going to do about this but now here? What's the words right after this but now? Not the but now over here in Ephesians 2.13. I'm not worried about that one. These people in Rome did not know anything about the but now up here in Ephesians 2.13 because it, wasn't, it didn't happen yet. When these people in Rome got this letter, they only had this letter. Don't tell me that it's in Christ because it, they're saved already. I don't want to hear that. It doesn't say these people are saved in Christ. It says they had a faith. And you better take the word, what it says, do not add to it. When you look at that lens, that, that changes the book of Romans for what it was written for. But now it's made manifest by what? The scriptures of the prophets. You go through 1 through 11 back there, folks. Paul is saying it is written. The prophets uh, using Daniel, I mean, David, he used a lot of Isaiah. Because in Romans 10, who hath believed our report? Where do you find that at? You find that Isaiah 53. You find where Paul talks about in Psalms and, 30, and, and uh, 22 and 32. Okay? You find that Isaiah. Look at this. Four through six. Talking about Romans. Why is that? This is David back here. Not imputing your sins to you. Your trespasses. 
Blessed is that man, he says. He also talks about we, we. Who's the we here? Paul's a Jew. The Romans are Jews with Greeks in there, in that mixture, in that synagogue. We now have the atonement. Paul is pointing, and with words, specific words, pointing to certain things. Now, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. It says how that he was buried in, oh, I'm sorry, verse 3, for I, uh, in the second portion of it, how that, if we didn't have that how that, it could be maybe a little clearer. But that how that, folks, is according to the scriptures. The gospel of Christ, I don't care what you say, is according to scriptures. It says it not only once, it says it twice. Well, where are those scriptures? You find those through Genesis, through Malachi and Romans 4. We have Abraham in the five justified by faith. Why is that? According to the scriptures. You have David according to the scriptures in Romans 4. Folks, you're going to have to believe your Bible or what you're basically doing is you're just blowing smoke up people's butts. That's all you're doing with these memes and just believe 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's more complicated than that. It is. Okay? If I find that, and if I read it for what it says, if I'm to believe 1 Corinthians 15, 3, it says how that. Well, Christ told you over here how that. It's according to the law of Moses, the Psalms, and the prophets. Dispensations do not like that, folks. In Romans 1 through 16, <clears throat> Paul lays out the gospel of Christ in there. And at 12, he tells you about other things. Then he gets back here to 16, and at the end of this letter, he throws in a big loop for most people because they don't understand this. They think they do. The preaching according to my gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ. What is the preaching of Jesus Christ? He just done it through 1 through 11. The preaching of Jesus Christ. We now have the atonement. Paul said to these Jews. Well, what is the atonement? Let's go back to Leviticus 16 and check this bad boy out. Because he said in Corinthians, it's according to scriptures. So if it's according to scriptures, we got to dig in this thing. He gives you everything you need to know about the gospel of Christ through Romans 1 through 11. Now, you got to take what is there, and you got to get it studied to show yourself approved. But don't just tell me that it's believe 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and you're saved. It's not it, folks. It says there and says how that Christ died according for our sins, according to the scriptures. That means part of Paul's gospel that he's speaking of in 15, 1 Corinthians 15, is according to the scriptures. He doesn't say it once. He says it twice. And if you leave that out, you're not giving out the gospel. You're not telling people what the gospel of Christ is. They need to know, where's my sins? Where'd they go? How? That? What's the why there? The because? What is it? I didn't write it. I would have made it simpler. But I'm not God. Leviticus 16. Folks, and I, I'm going to say it every time I get up here, there's a Bible study, and we study Bible. We just don't study Romans through Philemon and say every, that is our doctrine today. Because if your doctrine 
is that Abraham is your father in the flesh, then you need to check your doctrine. In Corinthians, Paul says, uh, you're able minister of the New Testament. Are you really an able minister of the New Testament? What's the purpose of that? Do you know that? Christ, people want to use this one sentence. I follow Paul as he follows Christ. Do you really? Because Christ told Paul that how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Do you use those scriptures to preach the gospel of Christ? Then are you really following Paul? Don't give me that hogwash. You know you're not. You're just throwing memes up there because they look nice and pretty. Get sick and tired of those things. And you give no clarity about the verse that you throw up there. If you even know what it is yourself, that what it means. Leviticus 16. Paul speaks of Leviticus 16. He doesn't say Leviticus 16, but he says, we now have right here in this verse, the atonement. He's talking about how Adam in Romans 5 plunged mankind from day one into sin and death, but by one man. The other Adam. And he talks about this right here. We now have the atonement. Justification, you'll find that back here a many in Isaiah 53. Paul says in Romans 10, who have believed our report. And they have a ties that Isaiah 53 with the gospel of Christ. You won't believe that because you'll believe all these conferences walking around here and saying, oh, just believe Christ died for your sins and bury you believe, and, and, and you'll be saved. Leaving out the rest of what Paul says there and says, you want to know how I know this, all this stuff? I'm just as guilty of it in the past. And if I told you a year ago, if you come around me, I couldn't tell you what I'm telling you today. I would have been repeating the same garbage that you're repeating today. That's how I know. You got to be one to know one. Anyway, there's a lot about a tabernacle back here that uh, a roving tent, if you will. And they just moved it. So anyway, we're going to move over into... Because when Paul says in here, 2 Corinthians 5, 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. The world at that time was here, not imputing their trespasses and those down in Jerusalem and all those un in the nations under the heaven, okay? That was to these people, the them and the there in 2 Corinthians 5, 19. And unto us, the us is the ones that is saved, that is going, Paul going out in all these regions, in those nations under the heaven. That was the world preaching the gospel of Christ. That was the us. There's a ministry there for those folks. Reconciliation. What is it? We're going to find out what Paul was talking about back here in the book of Romans about the gospel of Christ that you ignore. You don't believe the stuff that you think you believe. It sounds nice. But it's just pie in the sky, folks. We're talking about Aaron right here. <clears throat> and propitiation. If you do a little study on that, Paul talks about in Romans 3. You dig in a little bit deeper in that. Takes you back to a mercy seat. Where do you find a mercy seat? Well, we're fixing to dig into that. You think those Jews back then, Paul is going to, knew what propitiation means, a mercy seat, and uh, reconciliation? You think they knew what that was? You bet you they did. They knew exactly what it is. But Leviticus. 16, you know the difference back here and then what Paul was teaching back there in uh, Acts 13 to these folks was 
The difference was back here, you had to have a some bunch of goats and bunch of sheep. And you had, had to call something called a scapegoat. And folks, the Day of Atonement meant exactly that. That was a yearly feast. Yearly. So all the nation, all the national sins of Israel was placed on that scapegoat. Yearly. Paul talks about up here in Romans, folks. The man Christ Jesus, that was that scapegoat. He points you back to the Old Testament scriptures. Why? Because those Jews had to have something to look and believe it out of scripture. Like the Bereans, they searched the scripture to see what Paul was saying was true. And they were noble. Are you noble? Do you search the scriptures to see what Paul was saying was true? Or do you blow smoke in the sky saying, just believe 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, and you'll be saved? <clears throat> Leviticus 16. Oh, uh, see where I'm going to jump in here at. Let's start in verse 11 just for uh, uh, the study here. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. He couldn't go back to the holiest of holies back there. He had to make an atonement for himself and for his house before he went into the back of that temple. Well, well, I'm going to back up here. Let's just back up here. All right, well, we're just going to read the whole chapter of 16 because it's worth every bit of it. It may bore you, and I understand that. I used to think the same thing about back here. But, folks, if you want to know what the meat and potatoes are, I mean meat and potatoes, and you want to get down to the mechanics of the gospel of Christ, you have to come back here. And if you don't, you have no idea what's going on. Chapter 16, and the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of two sons, Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, speak unto Aaron, thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat. Wait a minute. A mercy seat, propitiation. They go hand in hand here, folks. Which is upon the ark that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Folks, when Aaron went back there, at the Ark of Covenant got there, back there, God was in that cloud back there. And if Aaron did not do exactly as he told Moses and Aaron to do it, he would strike him dead. Thus, verse 3, <clears throat> shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle. There's a comma there, so I'm going to pause myself. And with the linen, a uh, miter shall be he be attired, clothed. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh and water, and so put on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for one sin offering, and one ram for the burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself. Paul oh, says here, folks, we now have and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle, tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast <clears throat> lots. Upon the two goats. One of them is going to die. And one of them is going to be a scapegoat. One lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell. 
and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be a scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of the burning coals of fire from the off of the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of the sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he shall not die. So Aaron would not die, because he is now in the presence of the Almighty God. And he shall take of the blood of the bullet and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil. And do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullet and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. This is your day of atonement, yearly. And because of the transgressions and all their sins, and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Basically, making a sin offering for their filthy, rotten sins. Uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation where he goes to make an atonement. No man except Aaron. Who? Only Aaron could go in and make that atonement. Who was that other one man that made this atonement? One man. He died once. And folks, if you can't grasp this, you cannot grasp the gospel of Christ. How it can save. Because all you're doing is don't believe 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Want to find one of them people that want to know the how that. What's that mean? How that? Because it's in there. And then I'll say, according to the scriptures, then I might say, what scriptures? Can you answer that? That's what we're trying to do here, folks. We're not trying to beat you up. What we're trying to do is help you out, edify the body of Christ. And in doing so, let you look at these scriptures and you be persuaded in your own mind. Do you want to go by church tradition, which I call grace believers and their, and their mid-act dispensational view? Or do you want to believe what your Bible says? It's up to you. I present you with the evidence. You of the jury have to decide and make that decision for yourself. I can't make it for you. But I'm persuaded in my own mind, 100%. I was asked that question the other day. Are you sure with a big question mark? You betcha I'm sure. I'm so sure about it. I'm putting my faith in. I'm trusting that Christ did this. When he says we now have the atonement, that's how much I trust it and how much I am sure. Verse 17, again, there shall be no man into the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all, it says all, the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat, and put it upon the horns of the altar around, uh, uh, altar round about, 
<clears throat> and he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when, folks, look at this, up in verse 16, there has now been an atonement made uncleanness for these sins by that blood. Read it. Now, look what it says down here. It says unclean as children. Look at verse 20. There's a fascinating word right here that people don't want to mix because they sit there and tell you that just because God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself doesn't mean forgiveness. Baloney. They want to say that because they want you. What they want you to do is you got to believe the gospel first to be forgiven. You can't find a verse anywhere in your Bible that says that. But contrary wise, with all the evidence right here, Paul speaks of Romans 1 through 11. He points you back to the Old Testament scriptures back here, where if you can't ascertain that right there, then you need to go back and you read that thing until you do believe it. Because Paul is using these scriptures to prove the atonement right there. Who is that one man that went in there and took that? Who laid his blood I will not alter that mercy seat for you. Propitiation. Redeemed you. Verse 20. And when he had made an end of reconciling. So if you take what was going on up here and 1 through 19 with the sacrifices. And it's for the uncleanness of. Then we come down here, reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. He shall bring the live goat now. <clears throat> Folks, who do you think there's a picture of? They didn't know about Jesus Christ. They didn't know. They didn't know. <laughs> even Peter and the boys didn't even know. They knew none of these things Christ said in Luke. None. And you think these people back here knew? Come on now. Peter and the boys walked with Christ for three years and they still knew none of these things until he opened the eyes of their understanding. That live goat, and Aaron shall lay both hand, his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all, it says, all the iniquities of the children of Israel. And all of their transgressions in all their sins. There's a lot of alls going on here, folks. You think Moses really meant all? Or let me see here. If this is a picture of Christ, did God really reconcile himself with mankind by putting only some sins on for some people on Christ? And then those are only reconciled when you believe the gospel. Or was you reconciled by that blood 2,000 years ago before you ever thought about being alive? And then once you believe that, you'll believe the gospel. You're justified from all things. Christ really did die for all my sins. And was buried and did rise for my justification. Verse 21 again. And he shall lay upon the head, his hands upon the head of the live goat, confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send that goat. Away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Folks, this is a picture of Christ right here. And the next verse, and the goat shall bear upon him all, 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 folks. All the iniquities unto a land not inhabited. Folks, right here, when Christ went, when Christ died, he took your sin upon him. On that cross that day, he went to a land that was an uninhabited. 
He carried you. He was a scapegoat, took your sins down there. But according to some people, he rose from the dead with some of those sins until you believe the gospel. But 2 Corinthians 5, 7, not imputing their sins. Twenty-three again, and Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off. Oh, go back twenty-two. I'm sorry. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat into the wilderness. And Aaron, in verse twenty-three, shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he had put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. Verse 24, and he shall wash his flesh with water. Washing, do you think that's a baptism? In the Old Testament. And put on the garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and a burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe in his flesh in the water and afterward come into the camp. And the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make an atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. Folks. <clears throat> When Paul says, we now have the atonement according to the scriptures. Christ, how that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. you got to find out what we now have that atonement is for. Let's go down here to Romans 3. Romans 3. And as you see, I'm not going to get through this video again today. There's going to be another. Romans 3, 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption, the buying back. He had to get you back somehow. That is in Christ Jesus not a goat, not a sheep, none of that. Through Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, not some goat back here, not some bullock, through his blood, to declare his righteousness. Folks, when he said how that Christ died for our sins, there's a just God and he demands righteousness. And if you do not have the imputed righteousness of Christ, you do not have what he says in Romans 6, 23. It is a free gift. Let's go ahead and look at that thing. Romans 6. For the wages of sin is death. That's true. Somebody paid your wages. Somebody paid your ransom. Somebody did it for you. And it says sin. We had a Adam sin, which plunged mankind into sin and death. By the resurrection of Christ, he had victory over that death, that resurrection. And when he raised from the dead, I'm going to guarantee you this, folks. There wasn't one sin on that man. Not one. And don't tell me that you got to believe the gospel to be forgiven. Because if that's the case, Christ did not raise from the dead with sinless. He had to bring sins up with him. He left them down there. Ministers of righteousness will tell you that you got to believe. And you look that up in 2 Corinthians, what the ministers of righteousness are. They will tell you that you got to believe. They pervert the gospel of Christ, like Paul says in Galatians. 
they twist it like Satan so subtle in the garden. Eve says, we can't touch it or eat of it. That's not what God said. The ministers of righteousness will tell you the same thing. They lie to you. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. It doesn't say right there that the gift of God is forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't say that. Eternal life is. When you're found to be righteous, you have eternal life, folks. That's cut and dry. You have, I'm what I've always said this from how long. God today is not, he's in the imputation business. He's not imputing sins today, but he is imputing righteousness. And you can't be seated with Christ in heavenly places if you don't have that imputed righteousness. You can't believe the gospel of Christ if you're only saying believe 15, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Because it says that how that, and then it says twice according to the scriptures. What are those scriptures? you got to dig in there and you got to find them. You ain't really got to do that. All you got to do is go to Romans 1 and Romans 11, and you study in between there. Paul lays it out there. Anything you want to know between Romans 1 and 16, it's in Romans 1 and 16. The revelation of the mystery is in that Roman letter right there. The preaching of Jesus Christ is in that Roman letter right there. Paul's gospel is in that letter right there. But you have to get in there and dig it out. Salvation lies within if you just do that study. But don't go around telling people just believe a couple verses that they're going to be saved. The Catholics do the same thing. Are they saved? Are they? Because they always have a but added on. Your sins were forgiven at the cross, but and people eat that stuff up just like it's candy. Anyway, folks, uh, there's one more verse I'm going to go through right here today, and then we're still going to get over here. No, we're just going to go through this. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to Paul says over here. Now, of course, when he's preaching at Acts 13, he had something, and then he had to write the Galatian letter and reiterating what he told them. So we can go ahead and use the Galatian letter, okay? Because that was for these people in Acts 13 and 14. Let's go ahead and Galatians 3.13. The preaching of Jesus, Jesus Christ according to Revelation of the Mystery is this stuff here. Galatians 3.13. According to the scriptures, folks, remember that. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, it is written, would you think that's in the law of Moses and the Psalms or the prophet, prophets like Christ told the 12 apostles? We're fixing to find that out. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Let's go back here now, folks. Deuteronomy 21. Who do you think wrote that? Well, Moses. Deuteronomy. Let's go back here and whittle this thing down here a little bit. I got to find it. Here we go. Deuteronomy 21. The law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms was also Moses a prophet. Deuteronomy 21, 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, did Christ die. Why did he die? How that? Why is that? Because in verse 21 down here, the one that knew no sin took your sin. It was placed on the man Christ Jesus, and he became sin in your stead. Now you read this prophecy right here. Paul is speaking of according to the scriptures. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, Christ died for our sins. Was that worthy not? Christ became sin for you. And he be put to death. 
and thou hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain all night <clears throat> upon a tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. Didn't they bury Christ that night, that evening? According to the scriptures. That thy land be not defiled, which the Lord hath given thee for an inheritance. Folks, everything you find back here in the Old Testament that was spoken of Christ is a picture of Christ. That's why Paul and Romans and all his, the Corinthians and the Thessalonians and, and the Galatian letter point you back to those scriptures back there because they are the picture of Christ. Okay? And we now have that atonement, folks. What does that mean? Christ was reconciling, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. The, the blood was spilt. His only begotten son blood was spilt on your behalf because he took your filthy, rotten sins back there, folks. And he, he on that cross, and when he died for your sins on that cross, he was buried for three days according to the scriptures. We didn't even get into those days. There's a bunch of information right here, folks, we haven't even got into today. We're going to on the next video. Okay, because we have to, according to the scriptures, as Paul says in the Corinthians, and I'm going to keep pounding this and pounding it and pounding it home until you either start researching and believing for yourself or you just turn me off, one or two. But even if you turn me off, and if you do stay, I'm still going to keep preaching it out here, folks. It's going to be the same thing. I'm in defense of the gospel. It's I'm in defense of the gospel, in defense of the gospel. And that gospel of Christ is according to the scriptures twice. And the mud clears when you write it. Divide the word of truth.